are in the New Holland Area Historical Society. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go to school a hundred years ago or the time of your grandparents? Today we have large, beautiful buildings with hundreds of students in each grade. We have teachers, aides, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, principals, psychologists. We have all sorts of people, but there was a time when it was just a teacher. Come and join me and we'll find out all about school a hundred years ago. Education has always been important to the people of Lancaster County. In fact, one of the first schools in our country was built near here in 1712. Mennonites, a religious organization from Switzerland, established a school. On Sunday, they had church, and the rest of the week, their children could attend school. Schools were paid for by contributions, so not everybody had access to schooling. That is, until 1834. At that time, the Pennsylvania legislature passed the Free School Law, which established schooling for all Pennsylvania children, rich or poor, at public expense. We are in a replica of a one-room schoolhouse located in the New Holland Area Historical Society. Our school is just as it sounds, one room, where students in grade one through eight all attended together. Local farmers and carpenters would have built our school, so there are no two exactly alike. Some have a porch, some have a belfry with a bell to call students to class, and some had two doors, one for boys and one for girls. Here are pictures of some of the schools in this part of the county. were built on available land, not necessarily near spring for water nor population centers such as towns. A student's day started early as many farm children had chores to complete before they left for school. There were no school buses, so no matter what the distance or the weather, the children walked to school. Once the children arrived at school, there were many things to do. The first thing either the teacher or the students would do is stoke the stove. That means they would load the stove either with coal or wood. The students' parents provided the fuel for heating. Here you see our coal bucket. Pennsylvania was known for producing anthracite coal. The pot-bellied stove would provide plenty of warmth for students nearby, but the students sitting in the back would feel the drafts of winter. Teachers asked students to walk to the nearest farm with an old oak bucket to pump water for the daily use. Here is our ladle, which we would use either to dip the water or as a drinking cup. Students did many of the chores, such as cleaning the chalkboard, sweeping the floor, pounding erasers, washing windows, cleaning out the stove ashes, and generally helping the teacher. A job no one wanted was to spread lime in the privy. The privy was the outdoor toilet. The school desks were made of wood, and if the building had dirt floors, then desks were placed on platforms. You will see the desks are a variety of sizes because remember, students of different ages were all taught in the same room. The youngest and the smallest students sat on benches in the front of the classroom. My desk could be in the front of the classroom. Sometimes the teachers' desks were placed on platforms. Here I have my fountain pen, 
and my ink, which I would have used. And you will also see a small bell. This was used to get children's attention during the day. Are you listening? Somewhere in the classroom there would also be pictures of two of our favorite presidents. And ours are right behind my desk. There's President Lincoln and President Washington. My students are taught reading, writing, religion, and ciphering. Ciphering you will know as arithmetic. Sometimes students also learned art, music, geography, history, or science. It depended on the interest and the training of the teacher. The chalkboard was very important because where supplies were limited. Free books and paper would not be available to students until 1893. Students were charged a half a cent a month for ink. Because of the high cost of paper and pen, students used slate tablets for their work. They could scratch their work into the slate with a sharp object or use a piece of chalk. A very lucky child had this slate board. It is equipped with stencils for a child to practice his letters and numbers. Paper was made of rags and it was unheard of to throw even the smallest piece of it away. Older children would use copy books to write their ciphering problems and show their work. Because it was so precious, students would use the page from edge to edge. Good penmanship is the art of writing and was considered a valuable skill. If you look at this copy book, you will see this young man practiced very hard. Students learned mostly by memorizing facts, long poems, times tables, spelling words, Bible verses, and here is a list of all the presidents, at least the presidents until 1890s. This type of learning is called rote learning. Very early schools also used something called a horn book. These were wooden paddles with pieces of paper nailed to the front. These could also be used for children at home. It would have the ABCs on it, it might have a prayer, it might have times tables or words children were to learn. Paper was then covered by a piece of horn. The school year was very short, lasting from 12 to 16 weeks, and many times not starting until after Thanksgiving so the children could help with the chores. My students loved lunch and recess. For lunch, students would bring bread, cold meats, apples, cheese, pretzels, or leftovers from last night's supper in whatever type of tin box they had. Nothing was thrown away, and tins that contained lard, tobacco, or tea were used as children lunch boxes. Lucky was the child who had his own store-bought lunch kettle. When the weather was cold, students would walk to school carrying a half-baked potato. It would keep their hands warm, and when students arrived at school, they could put it near the stove, and it would be a tasty treat for lunch. At recess, students would play tag, crack the whip, Red Rover, Blind Man's Bluff. They might use a jump rope or a homemade top, marbles or throwing a ball. Sometimes girls would play cat's cradles, which was a game used with string. We had strict rules in schools and punishments were very harsh. Misbehaving children would have to stand in a corner with a dunce cap on. Some students were forced to balance on a block of wood in a corner, and the most common punishment was getting a whipping with a hickory or a willow switch. 
We did have good times in our schools. Everyone wanted to be part of a spelling bee where students could show how well they could spell words. And of course, at Christmas time, we decorated our own tree. We have cornucopias filled with candy or nuts and chains of cranberries and popcorn. And for a lucky child, there would be an orange. Although not a one-room school, New Holland had a very early schoolhouse. It was a two-story log structure built in 1787. It was near the Trinity Lutheran Church right off Main Street. It was one of the earliest free public schools in the state. The school was bilingual, meaning you could take your classes in English or in German. There was no formal training for teachers. If you could read and write and do ciphering, you could be a teacher. Most teachers were men and ministers until after the Civil War. Then more women were hired as teachers. But we could only teach until we were married. Sometimes teachers were paid a salary. Sometimes they were paid with goods, food, and lodging. In 1911, the school code authorized school districts to close or consolidate any public school. This was going to be the end of the one-room schools. It became less efficient to operate many little schools than one large school. In 1937, the age of compulsory education was raised to age 16. Compulsory means you must do it. Now, Lancaster County had many arguments and meetings in court to discuss whether the Amish children had to attend to age 16. But in 1972, the Supreme Court ruled that Amish children were exempt from schooling until age 16. I hope you have enjoyed learning what school was like 100 years ago. Please visit us at the New Holland Historical Society One Room School Museum at 207 East Main Street in New Holland.